Hello, everybody. Seattle Overload Podcast, diving into Seahawks prospect tape review, Texas Washington Sugar Bowl, and super relevant because not only does that have Ryan Grubb as the offensive coordinator, but there's three prospects who play for Texas, the Longhorns, even though they had a tough time of it in this actual game, who really do fit Seattle in Jalen Ford, Tavondre Sweat, which we can discuss actually if he really does do that. And then playing on like the nose slash three technique spot, Byron Murphy the second. Now, first of all, thank you for spending your time with us. Realize we may be overlapping with uh, another Seahawks podcast. So thank you very much for doing that. And thank you if you're watching on the uh, the recap, the rewatch. Drift, before all that, it's Easter. Do you have the Easter Bunny? Is the Easter Bunny a thing in America? Yeah. Yeah, the Easter Bunny is a thing. He even has a name. Peter Rabbit. Have you heard that one, Peter Rabbit? Well, see, see, I think the Easter Bunny is American and is an American invention to sell more candy. But I think Peter Rabbit is a Beatrice Potter thing, and I have a feeling that Beatrice Mm -hmm. Potter is English. No, see, I don't even know who Beatrice Potter is. So that is so messed up. So um, maybe I'm conflating. So so Beatrix Potter. Beatrix Peter Rabbit. Is Peter Rabbit the Easter Bunny? Google. No, Peter. No, what? What is this? Is Peter Rabbit the same as the Easter Bunny? So by 1950, Peter Rabbit had become Peter Cottontail. And Peter Cottontail had become the Easter Bunny, so our cultures conflated the two. No, so no, 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 no. Oh. America tried to rebrand it as okay. saying cultures conflated. That's very kind of. You want it to be a rebrand, not a conflation. No, no, I don't want it to be a rebrand. I think America did. Oh. I think they're quite aggressive. With oh, it. okay, yeah. The, yeah. the American hegemony, hegemony, the uh, big candy. We export our culture, then we also steal culture, and then we turn it into some weird hyper commercialized bastardization. Yes, yes. So, do, do you buy each other eggs? Do you, do you give chocolate eggs? Uh, when I was younger, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did the we, whole thing. We, um, Got it. Funny. Funny you specified youth, because actually in this country, it's very common for, you know, till the day you die, every single year, adults will just give our eggs to people. Really? So you're you're exchanging chocolate eggs still? Yeah, all the time. Well, oh, I say cool. all the time, just Easter, yeah. Very nice. That's nice. Yeah, everyone gets an egg. There's actually a thing where if you don't get an egg, then, you know, you're kind of shunned. It's not a good sign. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope that, that hasn't happened to you. No. If it had, Good. though, I wouldn't admit it because it would be, you know, a point of bit great of a, shame. There's a bit of a pregnant pause there before you said no. Now an even more pregnant pause. Oh. You're in your fourth trimester of this pause. Okay. So any any other Easter topics, Griff? Do you have lamb? Um, I actually got ribs from a steakhouse. So like upscale, probably overpriced, but very good. Well, like lamb ribs. some empanadas. They were beef. Oh, I think. that sounds amazing. Yeah, it was quite good. And then I also got um, some empanadas. See, it's a Spanish uh, steakhouse. Wow. Like Spanish cuisine. That sounds amazing. I believe the owners are from Spain. I might have that wrong, but very good. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Anyway. I didn't have lamb. Are, okay. Should we, you should lamb? we do this okay. thing? Lamb's good. Yeah, we're killing this preamble. Hit it, Maddie. That I think they're getting better and better. Benjamin, good to see. Monjombo, good to see. Axel, you're, all, Axel, you're always keeping us accountable, so I do appreciate that, but... Uh... Yeah, you were on time, Axel. That's correct. Misfit, nice to see you. Henry, good to see you. 
Okay. Bang. Welcome to the Seattle Overload podcast, where Griffin and I are going to be diving into a very relevant college football game, specifically Texas Washington in the college football playoff, the Sugar Bowl, the semi final of that thing. And why we're going to look at that is not just because Ryan Grubb obviously was the Huskies' offensive coordinator, and there's a relevant offensive line coach in that as well, but actually, we're going to be looking at the Texas defense. Okay, they struggled in this game, but you have Byron Murphy the second, who is a guy who may well be there at 16. And if Seattle wants to go full kind of, hey, our interior D-line's really damn good, they could certainly consider him. We previously looked at uh, Jason Johnny Newton out of Illinois in our last tape podcast. So having the kind of contrast between that, fresh off the Newton tape, is going to be interesting because those guys are slotted to go at a, a similar point in the draft. We also have from Texas, Jalen Ford, who is a linebacker Griff identified as a potential mic fit. And obviously Seattle right now, their mic linebacker role is looking shaky. Okay, they, they did sign uh, Tyrell Dodson to supposedly slot in there. Jerome Baker could do it in a pinch, but they need a proper mic and Ford could be that guy. Let's find out, see how he did in this game. And finally, Seattle, yep, they signed Jonathan Hankins as a big nose tackle, but... Tavondre Sweat is a even larger nose tackle, and he actually, I think, I mean, he does some really good stuff in this game. He might have the best stuff out of everyone from this game. Let's find out from the tape. But before all that, before all that, John Schneider went on the radio. Not much stood out apart from Griff. He said on the Wyman and Bob show that the team will be bringing in a couple of veteran offensive linemen uh, through. And he mentioned that being the second phase of free agency and then comparing that to what the draft looks like. So he also, previous to that point, had mentioned how they're aware, he just went off on a random tangent that they're aware of the offensive line and upgrading. So mm-hmm. he's feeling slightly pressed about it. And so he should, given Geno Smith was the sixth most pressured quarterback in 2023, despite having the sixth least sack percentage and on third downs he was the uh, third most pressured quarterback in the league pressured on over 50 percent of his third down so they've let damian lewis leave now they've uh their starting center's gone as well their some of their depth has gone <laughs> and uh ankrum is that is that a planet left guard or griff could yeah. it be as Bob Condota of the Seattle Times reported, there's rumors that Seattle's potentially targeting veterans Lake and Tomlinson and Cody Whitehair. Thoughts? Um, yeah, it's uh, the guard. I mean, they have left the O line. They 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 are entering the draft at O line worse than they left it left the regular season um, at O line. So the moves they've made. I think they knew that they had in their mind they weren't paying Damian Lewis. I also think they had in their mind they weren't trying to really fix the guard situation via free agency. They're trying to kind of reset it. So it's it's definitely it all hinges on the draft. The moves they made, I mean, maybe there's something there with Ingram. I doubt it. Um, I think they want to give him a chance to really compete. Um, you know, there are traits there. There might be something there. Um, but th- th- this really feels like they're just rostering via free agency depth. Um, the, the, the guys that they're talking about bringing in, excuse me, um, Lincoln Tomlinson, Cody White here. I mean, they're not great players. I don't, I would not even, I mean, they're maybe like above replacement, but below average kind of players. They're certainly worse than Damian Lewis, but obviously much more, uh, uh much less inex- or much less expensive cap wise. Right. So, um, I'm not really like, moved by any of this i don't think they are either i think it's just them doing due diligence um there are other names out there that would be more intriguing um but i don't think they're in their budget so yeah i mean they're tight up against the cap and there's ways that they can create more room by various restructures but just their 
behavior of the off season and then what those maybe slightly higher priced guys would likely be looking for in terms of contract length. I'm thinking uh, specifically there, Dalton Reisner just seems too rich. And so, yeah, as you said, the, you know, Tomlinson, white hair, what you can say about them is they're NFL veterans. Whitehair came into the league in 2016. He made a Pro Bowl in 2018. He was in the All Rookie Team in 2016. Tomlinson he came into the league in uh, in 2015 and uh, he's been in round uh, teams. Got made a Pro Bowl in 2021 with the 49ers in his last year there. But you know they are uh, they're on the back end of their careers, 32 and 31 respectively. So yeah. Uh, not kind of move the needle moves, and and I think that's also why Schneider says they're gonna have them in, and then have them kind of compare to the the draft class, see see how they stack up with everything, maybe put them through some testing. I don't, I don't know what they get up to, and I do wonder if when he says second phase of free agency, if potentially these are you know staying up to date, saying okay, here's the plan, maybe they say hey, we'll see how the draft goes for us. And, you know, there's a spot here if it, you know, if, if we're still interested in you afterwards. I, I don't know what the interest is from, you know, other teams that is maybe not quite of a rush to sign a Tomlinson or a Whitehair anymore. And the type of contract value is probably looking like more like vet minimum type of thing, which, Griff, it's kind of odd how Seattle's roster, I mean, is, is definitely worse at guard and it's also definitely yeah. worse at linebacker um it, right. in a way it depends how you view bobby wagner obviously we may be a bit more critical of bobby wagner than the general consensus i mean the man was an all pro so <laughs> right but it, yeah it, it seems like they've got worse at certain positions and then there's also this other factor to all of this where the, the, as we've talked about, the contracts are a lot of them are expiring in 2025, and it's like, yeah, they're trying to stoke some competition up, get some, get younger, but also, you know, the good players are going. And yes, Damien Lewis to get absolutely paid. Um, anyway, have to see how it all plays out, but uh, an interesting topic, and we will have to, we will be diving in in uh, another tape podcast. Format-wise, I mean, it's handy that this Texas game has three players, and so we're not mm -hmm. going to do the format like that. But moving forward, we're going to try and do, I mean, 10 minutes is a bit tight for us, but maybe 15 minutes of, say, three prospects in a, in a thing, or or maybe we describe a whole class, because Griff's actually put together some rankings, which you can find on Twitter, at C Mike Spin Move. Your, Griff, you're not, your at's not on the screen. That's a trophy. Oh. You're right, it's not. That's such a shame. Um, oh, well. Griff has... <laughs> you know where to find me. He's put together lots of positional rankings and he's watched a lot of the uh, interior offensive line. So maybe for a, like an important position group like that, we've rattled through the rankings, we pick out one or two, maybe three guys who stand out to us and give you kind of the flavour of them, the essence of them. So chat, if that sounds good to you, let us know. I know just cycling through the tape, there's obviously pluses and uh, n negatives to that approach. So, yeah, please do get involved. And also thank you for the comments. I have seen them on sort of suggesting players that we watch. Uh, keep them coming as well. All right, Griff, anything to add on overall off-season approach or should we just get into this? Uh, no. Or, or even Schneider Radio interview or should we just get into this tape? Let's just dive right in. Right. Shall I, shall I start playing the tape? And or do you want to in do you, well first of all, why yeah. did J Jalen Ford stand out to you? Because in this game he doesn't do as much, right? Yeah, it's not this game. Um, Jalen Ford he checked off the kind of like the height, weight, and I think athletic trait profile, mm -hmm. um, but like to the degree of like a second or third rounder, and then his tape is more like a fourth rounder. But he shows, I think, a semblance of play of him understanding like how to play the linebacker position, reading his keys um, and then, and knowing where his threats are in the passing game. He has some, um, yeah, he has some examples of carrying seam routes 
It's just he doesn't do like more so like the the hook drops and everything. He just doesn't do it to like a polished degree. So he'll mm -hmm. he'll be late to kind of drift back underneath an in breaker, but he understands that he knows that he needs to. Whereas a lot of these guys in this class are just sitting ducks. They drop to a spot and they're not really doing much relating to the pattern, relating to what the offensive concept is in totality. He's at least trying to put the picture together. And I, I've said this before, but he really reminds me of Junior Colson last year before Colson kind of hit another level. Um, yeah. I think Ford is like year two Junior Colson and in and, and more ways than one, like overall their traits are similar and everything too. And Ford is also a year younger, right? He, in terms of his football experience, he is a junior. Yes. Oh, I, no, no, he yeah. is a senior. Never mind. Oh. Why did I think well, that? But, but maybe because I've I've spoken about him that way before. Um, but, I yeah, I, I do think he's just kind of like behind Colson in general. And I don't know, maybe he won't progress. But um, he's he's just one of the few guys that I think could I sp factor. I Sorry to interrupt. Uh, no, it's because Colson is a junior. I had it the wrong mm. way around. Yeah, well, that even further speaks to uh, even further speaks to Colson, I think. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, I've got Murphy as my number two tackle, ninety after Johnny Newton playing two yeah. I. And the two I roll is something that obviously Seattle struggled with so much in 2022, but Mike McDonald used a bit more in nickel, I think to kind of buy time when he was in too high presentation at the snap. A bit like what Seattle used to do when they had Cam Chancellor doing that sort of stuff. Do you think this is a stunt between uh, 88 to defeat zone? You think that's what's going on here? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it kind of well, does. Uh, yeah, mess I, with I don't the know. Front side of it. No, or you think he's just playing quick? I think it's an exchange between eighty-eight and twenty-three. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know if Murphy is. I think Murphy's just reacting because his a gap kind of disappears. Yeah, this center's so flat. It's like okay, I should probably try and. It's almost like a pull, right? Yeah. But, I mean, a, a play you'd expect Ford to make, but good uh, good breaking down of the feet, not crossing over, um, good lowering of the target. And it should... So, I don't want this to get too confusing for people. We spoke about Ford, we spoke about Murphy. So... Uh, like dimensions wise, Murphy is more, even though he's playing here as the nose tackle, right, Griff? But, um, mm -hmm. or the two eye. And in this game, they kind of plugged and played him and sweat, which I think speaks to both of their abilities. But Murphy, dimension wise, at the combine was uh, under six foot one, 297 pounds. And so he has that, um, you know, in the, in the past, they'd be like, oh, he's too short. But obviously, you have the natural pad level advantage the leverage advantage by being a shorter dude uh he's also got uh, again similar to newton in that sense and then similar to newton his arms are shorter than 33 inches which in the past seattle especially if they're going to spend a high asset on a guy they like longer guys on the interior i mean who wouldn't right but i don't recall seattle taking or even paying a guy with short arms they just haven't really right done it. yeah um now Sweat is absolutely massive, isn't he? <laughs> I, yes, he's yeah, a large uh, man. He, great analysis there from uh, from me, but like you know, can confirm here. So he's number ninety three on this chat. At the combine, he was uh, six foot four and a half inches and three hundred sixty six pounds with thirty three and a quarter inch arms, and he had a one point eight second ten yard split, which like for that size is pretty damn impressive. Um, Right, let's uh, let's play this through a bit more. I don't know why it's lagging suddenly. That's quite annoying. Hopefully that stops. Uh, 
and you're going to see a lot of Ryan Grubb shifting. So uh, I think I described it before as like a pain in the butt, but oh my words, like, so you spread doubles with the uh, tight end uh, to the field. Oh, no, not to the field, the ball's in the middle. Anyway, tight end's one side, obviously. It's 11 personnel. And then they get into pistol trips um, slot. So nub formation. And then... <laughs> it's also like we say, though, if if the offense struggles early, which it might do, like year one of a system... It'll yeah. be funny to see how quickly it goes from, oh, this is so creative. They're doing lots of movement to, they're too cute. Like, line up and play ball because um, they will do a lot of stuff, I think. And there's also, when you, the more stuff you do, the, the higher the likelihood, obviously, of uh, procedural penalties and all that stuff. So this is, I've, this is a really good rep from, uh, from Murphy Griff. Yeah. So mere step to I... Counter, and it's also a very good rep from uh, Sweat. The two D tackles yeah. just clean this up. Yeah. So Murphy chat fills the guard pool, so he's aware that he needs to try. He's getting a back block from the center. He's going to try and cross the face of it. So he does a pretty good job of quickly reacting that's a very quick first step in a mirror step excellent pad level getting the height helping him out he got real knock back he almost knocks that guy back into the second puller and then you can see how he dips his hat here because he's trying to cheat the gap or get the numbers back so that's pretty impressive rep and sweat has an excellent rep he because he's so big he's able to play thick which that looks pretty scary from him. Yeah. But once he's extended, he's thinks about dropping the knee, doesn't need to, uh, and he's able to ultimately win back into the tackle, which Yeah. He's he's st he's steering the the guard the whole way. Is it um is it Rex Ryan when he talks three techs, he was always like it's an ability alignment in the which is uh, I mean that's by no means um exclusive to Rex Ryan. R Wex Ryan, Rex Ryan. Uh, a lot of coaches mm -hmm. would use that term, but what he means by that is the the worst, the lesser the player you are, the wider you're going to play in a, in an outside shade because ultimately you're responsible for the B gap, right? But the better the player you are, the bigger the player you are, the tighter you can play, and then the thicker mm -hmm. you can take that block on because you can really knock the crap out of someone and still win to your gap. And so yeah. here, Sweat plays super super thick. Yeah, and, and it is interesting that it's interesting that he's so often the three technique, and they've got in this uh, game, or yeah, well, just in general, because Murphy played right. so much nose nose tackle like he is right now, being the a gap right. player, and I wondered if that's just because they they saw so much strong side gap scheme that yeah, they wanted, which is which is what this is, chat, because it's to the tight end. And I think um, Sweat as well, to your point, Griff, I think he really anticipates these guys coming to combo him. Yeah. I think they must have got a lot of that. And so in terms of the opposition there against Griff, obviously Grubb, really good play cooler. Penick's going to get drafted. Uh, <laughs> we were thinking maybe round three, but it's, <laughs> hey, he ran a, he ran a 4 like... 2 six, 40, didn't he? Um, yeah. uh, four five six. But it was funny how that got reported as four four six, But... Washington obviously has some really good players in the trenches as well with their, their offensive line. Um, do you have any comments on, on the O-line at Washington, Griff? On the, the UW line? Yeah. Uh, with the draftable players? I mean, Fatanu is – I mean, he'll be a great player. Probably factors in at guard. Um, that's what makes this tape so so good because the competition's high level. Yeah. A great D-line versus a great O-line. So but He's, he's – is he playing left tackle here? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So in terms of forward speed, obviously, um, he's not the quickest, is he? But he, he ran a 4.6-ish 40. 
which is an okay time for him. They said he was dealing with a hamstring uh, issue, I think, yeah. or maybe a groin, soft tissue thing, which seems to be quite a common, uh, yeah, common uh, thing going around from the pro days. Is this, you know, how much does his speed limit him, Griff? Ford, I mean, I think he's got functional speed to to you know when he's healthy and everything I, I didn't see it as a problem i saw him run some things down sideline to sideline um i mean it's not a super fast linebacker class the the really really fast guys the guys that are running sub four six are 230 225 you know um so um this is pretty some, crazy yeah this is a from from Murphy here, the knockback he gets, and again, going up against, um, well, their, their tackle over, right? But to to get this amount of knockback in the goal line rep where they're geared up to really knock you off the ball with the line of scrimmage, I mean, look, they only have to get, like, one yard. But this is pretty textbook technique. Uh, yeah. And this running back, the worst thing is he, he's trying to hit this hole, but he has to really avoid that, which to avoid that is then going to take you more time to bubble around. And it's such a good knockback that they're trying to, they're thinking this guy's unblocked because of the quarterback threat of the keeper. This guy's um, unblocked by design. It's basically for the running back to run him over. But this guy's really flat to... Um, because he's worried about uh, this, I think, as well. And to also have the contact balance here, Griff, to, to stay up. Yeah. So how does how did Murphy, in your opinion, stack up in c comparison to Newton? I, I know we sort of spoke about it on the last podcast, but... Um. I mean, like in, with regard, just in general, or I mean, as a as a pass rusher, as a fit he just for, a, maybe as a fit for the Seahawks. Well, it's it's tricky because if we're viewing them as pure three techniques, Newton offers more, I think. But if if, if we can, if we view the, the team through the lens of what the scheme was last year, mm -hmm. Murphy's ability to play two eye and pretty well. Um, makes you think about well you know you've got bodies between leonard williams and draymond jones at three and big end then jaron reed at nose of course but then you know he's not gonna be on the team forever there will be a vacancy so murphy kind of gives you some versatility but then what mcdonald wants out of his nose tackles is he wants michael pierce he wants jonathan hankins he wants devondre sweat playing yeah. nose tackles so i don't know I, I i feel like newton is just more the type of player but and again, like they're also on the shorter side, and Matabuike is six three three hundred. If, if I mean, I wonder to an extent is McDonald just straight up saying no to Newton and and Murphy in the first. Like if they if they if one of them falls for some crazy inexplicable reason, like say to the twenties, then maybe he'd say that he'd say, okay, go for it. But he might just be more into the idea of let's go guard in the first or maybe safety if they have if they have a guy they really value and then just being okay with taking a talented but maybe project type player like Aruro or Michael Hall on day two. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're just content with getting a quality player like Dorless or Jenkins, yeah. you know. Because if they if the they depth. I mean it's not an apples to apples comparison, but if they view like Leonard Williams and obviously, no rosters are uh, constructed exactly the same. But if you view like Leonard Williams as your Justin Madabike in terms of like investment, but also they both play three tech, right? Maybe yeah. Williams moves around a bit more. You know, he had success in Baltimore with guys like Broderick Washington, um, uh, Brent Urban. Um, you know, but you know, you kind of. They were picked day three or they were low cost free agent types along with, you know, don't get me wrong. There was some, there's some more invest, investment as well. Like Travis Jones, I think was a third round pick, um, but like highly athletic. 
but it's mm-hmm. not it's not like a ton of first round uh, interior D line. Yeah, right. Like he might think, "Hang on, we we've already invested a fair bit here." So G- Griff, the, I'm keep rewinding this clip because this is Jalen Ford. Yeah. it's a peek at his uh, coverage awareness. So he's he's in yeah. like a it's like a type of cover too, isn't it? But obviously he's not the pole runner. There are. Uh, Oh, maybe it's quarter, quarter, half. No, no, I think it is cover two, isn't it? But they're just getting a big cloud here. Um, but yeah, it shows like had had they run something like fled to the field, it shows him getting to the right spot, and they don't, so he doesn't have any. He doesn't have any issues, so he just squares up in his hook. And they do but, love double posts, so maybe, maybe he's like thinking the, that. Could be like, and, and also look how he gets to the depth of the inbreaker, the backside inbreaker as well. So he he's like, all right, I got nothing going to the field. I I peek that the it's the concepts going the other way. I'll cap my depth at his inbreak, and this doesn't look like much, and it isn't, but it does demonstrate that like he knows like what could be happening, and so few linebackers in this class are even showing a semblance of like. Yeah. I don't even know how to explain it. Like some of them aren't even asked to do something like this. They just spy or they just blitz or they just kind of hug the line of scrimmage. You know, it's, it's just, just the, the, the reaction to this type of drop back and what this offense does and the way Penix is kind of half rolling like this. He's anticipating it's a boot. It's this type of throw to the field. And so in my drop, there ain't no point me squaring up now and looking at him just do that drop. I need to get deeper, have a peek over my shoulder for that type of route or get to the depth of this type of route. And yeah, like you said, Griff, it's a great point how he's getting to the depth of that pattern. He squares up with the quarterback as the ball's coming out, which is solid, right? Mm-hmm. Think about the coverage weakness, guys. The, the, there's this weakness here, which also, while Penix doesn't throw that, that type of route is is going to bang into. It's uh, a, a solid solid skill. And just the way he moves in, in zone, uh, these... Uh, these movements are fairly efficient and maybe you could clean a few things up. But again, a lot of the people in the class, they don't show that. Right. You can see him look for, uh, look both ways as well, which is nice. Yeah. It's like there's a, there's a backbone to his process and coverage. Mm, yeah. Foundation that, that, to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the best way I can describe it. All right, another another disgusting formation. <laughs> Shifting. I do. I'm interested to see how Grub deals. I know he's been asked about it, and there's only so much he can say. But his it was a big thing for him to put the formation into the short side of the field, like here, like the formation is the boundary, yeah, and kind of mess around with that, and like how effective that is in the NFL compared to college. I think is lessened because obviously the hashes are tighter, but. To what degree, or if he really kind of tests the NFL in that sense, is going to be fascinating. Right. Okay, so um, Murphy's back in the game. Sweat's getting a breather, and I'd be interested to see how many snaps he actually did play. Uh, that's actually not Murphy. It's 98. Oh, my apologies. Never mind. Yeah, it's still out. Look like a zero. Okay, so we've got Ford to watch here. Hmm. You'd like him not to turn into this contact, but I guess he's trying to play skinny. But that's uh. Anyway. Yeah. You'd like him to stay square. You can tell that he's playing the boot too. Like that's what he's. Yeah. I mean, you think if, if he, you'd think high hat. Well, I th- maybe that's why, because Fatano comes out kind of high. Maybe he's cheating. I don't know. I yeah, don't it's know. quite flat. Yeah. Another nasty formation look. Split back pistol. And then running back option. Oh, wow, Penix. Hmm. Why is he so late to that over the middle? 
I mean, it's not, he's not even, it's just not on his radar. It's not what he's, not the game thing, he's trying to play. So it's a shame we don't get to see, it's a shame Ford's on the edge uh, here and we don't get him in the high hole again, right? Because I have a feeling he'd have found this. Yeah, yeah, it would have been an informative rep in, in either direction. Which is a good thing for scouting chat, like... You, you, you sometimes need to just see it to believe it. Just, um, just that exposure. And likewise, if you haven't seen it, it doesn't mean they can't do it. So, Yeah. And so in this game, uh, and a bit like how Seattle used Jordan Brooks in the past as an, as an edge player, uh, Ford played a bit on the edge. Don't think McDonald's going to run much of uh these types of looks with a uh, linebacker on the edge unless it's like it won't be like an early down thing it'll be mixing a match in your pass rush fronts um it, it'll be rare and i don't think that's ford's game either but it speaks to how they viewed him compared to the other backers i guess he had the size yeah. to do it and make it a bit viable all right, we need to find a play where Murphy, Murphy and Sweater back in, don't we? Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. So th this is just Sweat being huge. And yeah, the center's big. like the center's like. Um... <laughs> yeah, he's so big. It's like, is he? Is he a is he a one or is he a two eye? He's he's not. He's just I'm in this bloody a gap and I'm going through. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I don't know. It'll be interesting. Does this? I don't think this flies so much in the NFL. You know. Yeah, it, he'll get. The the thing is, I mean, like he he works down the line decently for a big guy. Yep. Um, interesting blocking scheme. I think Texas kind of had some parts of UW's blocking scheme figured out because this this front puts stress on their rules. Um, and what I mean by that is like the center climbs, it's like a hard flow zone. He, he should stay on the combo more, I would think, especially with Sweat. Well, it seems like the center just gets mind uh, melted by the by how Sweat plays him like that. Yeah. You think the thing with Sweat, though, is that he's just not giving you a lot in pass rush. It's just hard to draft that too high, I think. Are they gapped out here? No. Why I asked that is sweat sweat's almost playing like um No, I don't know. His alignment's interesting. It's just interesting. Now, I wondered if he was a two eye tightening because the back's here, but he was already lining up like that before the back switched, you know, anticipating run in this direction, but Yeah. And Murphy's kind of late off the ball, or is he? Is he playing in a four eye to accommodate uh, this safety insertion? That's what I. Kind of weird, right? That flat step and yeah. then the. Yeah, it's, oh, that's unusual. Is the corner in it? No. Super odd. But he's he's very uh agile in the short area right murphy yeah well, yeah yeah I mean, he, he's got those short steps his weight is dropped and to that point 1.69 second 10 yard split 33 inch vertical jump at 297 pounds it's doing pretty good yeah. and here we see a nice loop yeah we finally get some pass rush I mean, kind they a, they really struggle. It's kind of sweat being huge again. Yeah, because he stays on the center, so the center <laughs> is kind of obliged to. It but it's a uh, big ass. He, yeah, you can't really take much from this. No, just but just uh, just um, yeah, 
Murphy doesn't really have to bend much. He can just run straight downhill almost. <laughs> but right. he had he's quick. Yeah, I mean it does show his traits. Like I mean, he looks he's a big man running, like in the full sprint. I mean, he looks good doing it. So this is this is an example. So again, we've already looked at the grub offense, but they have a backside like this route is wide ass open, right? But Penix are always well, I say always. There, there will always be an exception, but very, 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 very often, whenever it's one on one, or even if it wasn't one on one, but he felt good about the matchup outside, he's throwing the sideline option. He's never throwing the over the middle stuff, which is viable, right? Because they had really good timing and stuff. But it's to the point of when we first looked at the offense, we we're like, how did this translate to the NFL? Well, this is pretty right. NFL y in that you've got like double posts here. And you've got like Hoss or like Hitch outside, and then the slot slot seam slot fade. But like Geno Smith uh, against different coverages, he might throw that or he might throw that. We've seen him do it before. Um, right. Yeah, and their timing was just ludicrous on stuff like this. So I, I don't know how. I it'll be again interested to see how Grub adapts and what happens when he can't get Hoss going do we see the backside stuff get hit more often you know all that sort of stuff right and, and who's running who's running the backside stuff you know yeah yeah and who 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 runs a slot fade because like can DK win that sort of thing I mean it's not it's not DK's game obviously it's Jackson's game Tyler can do it yeah but then I I also want to see I want to see JSN running a crap ton of inbreakers you know i want him kind of on the back side of concepts um where he's further down the progression but a really good option to progress to that's a slight example of ford's movement skills so he reads the play action he reads the quarterbacks looking downhill at him immediately so it's he's in he's looking at the boundary side as well so there is no yeah. point turning to look at it look he's looking at me so I need to get quick depth, but be square so I'm able to break quickly. I don't want to open and bail and let that guy across my face. And then it's the way he flips back to melt underneath with the, the root, uh, feels yeah. the root behind him, like that move there. Now, again, yeah. it looks very, it looks uh, less obvious than it, it might have done if the board come out immediately, but it's signs signs that he could do it yeah promising signs for it is this three match like uh three with a match up here it's weird you've got why they is do the... some cool stuff in coverage was it quarters and he's just fox in the post Yeah, it might be. Anyway. It's weird spacing, but that's, yeah, you know, college weird. hash marks always gives you that. Yeah. Because you've got, like, zero playing a hook, I guess, technically, but he's, like, flooding to the flat. I don't know. Yeah. So, obviously, it doesn't really work here because it's play action, not run, but uh, speaks to the grub's ability to sell play action by making, uh, varying up his pass protection. Again, want to see that in the NFL and how that works, but... They really sell the run fake here with the way they combo on the three, uh, which is obviously Murphy, and then combo up here. Like, that is a more believable run fake than just high hats and uh, dropping back into pass pro. Obviously, every team does it, but I feel he varied up his pass protection uh, in, in a good way. Now, Murphy here on the combo looks to drop his knee, and that's something he'll do a lot, and he has a lot of success with. Yeah. Uh, obviously, here it's pass pro, so tough but that should show up again if it doesn't just google murphy drop the knee just a way of taking the load off the double and then you can pop back up again and split into your gap when the ball comes up there or you need to get off the mm -hmm. block do we have a real pass rush rep finally you might do i was hoping ford would do something kind of kind of so Ford, Ford is a hook curl dropper, so it's a hook curl dropper. Generally, 
I mean, depends how you view these receivers and the distribution, but you're generally dropping to the inside receiver, generally. There's yeah. some oversimplification, but also your, your landmark to the field is basically going to be two yards inside that hash. Uh, so what's nice here is he reads the quarterback's back foot hitting, and then he, after looking at pass and everything, he's then getting his eyes to the receiver because... If that receiver is vertical and fast, then I need to then get back and get depth and pedal back to maintain body position as an underneath lay on it. Right. Maybe he, uh, it's interesting they chase it out. I guess they're matching this, but again, it's the signs yeah. of the way he looks and then squares up and then looks and sets up with the quarterback is okay. Realizes it's, there's uh, something. Yeah. Unusual defense. Um, But really, it should have been, you know, the pass should have killed it, shouldn't it? Yeah, and and good job by Penix to find his platform again. Yep. And, yeah, and this was a strength. big play for the Penix, uh, the Penix Hive, wasn't it? I remember because also, it's like, can you get more middle? Now, obviously, the plays broke down, but as composure, yeah, I mean, the poise. It's, it's, it's in the pocket, but out of structure, technically. Yeah, um, but it, it's a lot of poise, isn't it, in, in the moment, and a lot of people... Right. Well, I mean, he was very impressive in this game, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. And who was the receiver one? Is that Polk? Yeah. So bad with numbers. Same. Well, no, I'm good. I, I can read the numbers. Well, other than when I just called 98 number 90, but... I'm bad with remembering jersey numbers. <laughs> yes. I always have been. Just because I go off their, like, silhouette on tape. Okay, so they're running a. Oh wow, that's impressive from. Uh, yep. That's that's an impressive rep from uh, Murphy, from Murphy. Here. So he's a very he can get vertical like very quickly. Um, I like how he works to the center. <laughs> I mean, like he he lulls the guard to sleep. You see the hands, and then he can get explode. The very explosive, right? <laughs> It's working the outside shade. I mean, that's not his job here because he's playing. He's an A-gap player. He's the inside shoulder of the guard. But when he gets those few outside reps on the, on guards and stuff, I just he doesn't he he has power and inside counters. But it's a, a little alarming, not alarming, but it's a little frustrating. He just doesn't have a bad working outside. But like this right here, like this is impressive. This is him, kind of just Bob, like it's like a a club so swim. It? Is this why everyone thinks he'd be nice as a three tech Griff? Because you know you hit work wide from the angle on the guard, and then he can, you know, work here and then work the inside or the outside, but kind of from his width get kind of tight and then work this type of club swim stuff and get vertical quick. Yeah, yeah I mean I, that's the theory, and like also he's he's six foot three hundred, barely. Yeah, so you there's know? obviously and... size concerns. Yeah. And the, the the precedence for this is is like Grady Jarrett. Like Grady Jarrett played nose at Clemson mm. and projected the three techniques. So chat you know correcting I mean? us that number one is uh, Roman Odunze. We we oh my gosh, I knew that. Oh my, sorry, I'm an, I'm an idiot. My bad, guys. So I, pro I promise I know who Odunze is. So why is this impressive, guys? Well, look, he's he's here. He's here, he's here, okay? They're sl so they're all one-on-one, -on -one, but um, Murphy's the guy who's double-teamed. So he's the guy who they're saying, hey, we'll, we'll go one-on-one -on -one elsewhere, but we're going to slide to to Murphy and uh, try and get a double-team on him. And rather than just get blocked, he... Uh, nice, good club. I mean, have we commented on this guard before? I, f I feel like there's one Washington guard who we may have commented on. Um, yeah in the grub episode but yeah anyway <laughs> oh this is an impressive forward play Griff. except it would have been nice if he made the tackle like a mid screen to Odunze yeah it's good recognition though like understanding that what the hell like this is a really deep pass set, and then why is this receiver 
so slow off the ball and then dipping like that. Oh, it's a screen. Like that's very real in in play recognition. Yeah, I know Washington. You know they they'd run mid screens before. Obviously, it's not their first time doing it, but good kind of reaction to okay pump fake okay this is my threat oh he's now on a mid-screen path just a shame he couldn't finish but ultimately him him splitting that double saves a touchdown because uh if odunze is not delayed um you know if they block that uh <laughs> He might be able to climb up here, or we've got a guy here, and we've got another guy. Like, there's, there's, they're all deep. That there's a touchdown, so he does save the play, even though he misses the tackle. Right, right, right. Well, this is annoying because now we can't see the numbers. <laughs> you know the NFL. Uh, well. Yeah, on NFL Game Pass, having the two different angles is kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. Big, big addition. Because you just view certain things so differently. Okay, so are they ball fritting here? Like, to me, Ford is a bit disappointing here. If, like, it, it's odd. I don't know if he, if he even sees the guard pull. But, like, that's a wide flow away. This guard is pulled around, like, get on your horse, you know? Yeah. Like, what are we... Is he playing... Is he playing for that? I know they they are um, out-gapped. Nasty run concept again. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff um, from Grub and the board. Who is, who is this? Not our guys, is it? 55? No. Oh, no, you no, mean no, no. the tackles? I was looking at the, the, the D-tackle struggle here. It's 95 and uh, 88, I think. Yeah. Yeah, there was a drop-off for, for uh, Texas, for sure, from... From uh, yeah, the first stream, second stream. I think this is a defensive bust. I think that he should be here, he should be here, he should be down here, and then given the numbers. So they should basically uh, turn back or fast flow and then next available with the full flow away, right? Yeah. Yeah, this kind of messed up. But again, from Grub, this is nasty because one, that's um, what's he called, Westover, like kind of tight end type, but detached as a slot. Why does that matter? Well, detaching him as a slot means this dude's going to play more kind of off and he's not in the fit. Um, and they've tried, but also it's to the boundary. So easier angles for that pull means it hits quicker. Uh, and they also shifted into it, which makes their adjustment uh, mess up um, and yeah they just get more numbers to the uh, to the play because that pull around and then the quarterback as well having the threat along with this lead block they're just too much uh, too much yeah yeah you can see and they can leave him unblocked by design Part of the reason teams don't do this in the NFL, and obviously some teams do, like with Lamar Jackson, but uh, one of the reasons is edges here. Like, if you're going to ride the the mesh like this, I think most NFL edges would just be able to destroy that mesh point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't really you don't really see them uh, string it out very long, do you? Because the they're NFL. just too athletic, right? Except for Lamar. Yeah, other than Lamar. And speaking of Lamar as like an athlete, he's so laterally fluid and, and uh, agile and explosive in that way, whereas Penix 
I know he ran a fairly fast 40, but he's very kind of, you, I mean, you can see it here. He's kind of clunky and stiff uh, in his going sideways. He's fast in a straight line, but it's, it slows down a, a significant amount when it comes to changing direction. Yeah. And I knew he had the knee injury. Okay, a bit of wildcat with a fake reverse. Again, Grub in, a, in his bag. It'll be interesting to see, like, if Grub has, like, a... Obviously, it would depend on game state, opponent, what they've seen on tape, what... Uh, yeah, all, all these things. But he's he's good for about two... Two, like, shot plays, which are interesting, like, near midfield. Yes. And then two, like, gadget plays. And yeah. I say two, you know, it's, it's likely a bit more than that. But there's, like, one pretty gadgety play. Yeah, he definitely gets his... Uh... Kind of like Shanahan esque, just like designer. Like it doesn't matter who's on the field, offense or defense, he'll get that extra yardage. Um, right. Are any of our guys in there? No. No. That's interesting. What was the score at that point? Seven seven, goal line play, and they don't have their dudes in. Oh, that is uh oh no, it's not. That's crazy. That's idiot again. Yeah, weird. What were they doing with their personnel packages? They probably just figured it's the difference between seven and three points enough to waste their or to use up their snap count for them. I don't know. Right. That's a nasty shift as well. Getting your best tackle into the tight end position. Uh, and then going from uh, gun to under center. And then it's a quick hitting fullback dive. And look at this crease that is here. Right. Where the offset fullback is. Then that to further delay the crease because this guy might have to expand. But he's halted by it. So... You can see the alley already. Yeah. Just speaks of a lot of uh, tape study of how teams are going to react to their formations. Right. Which obviously everyone does, but Grub seems to just nail it, or at least did last year. Wow. Great quarters beater right there. Yep. So quarter, 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 quarter. Way to beat quarters is obviously this guy is one-on-one, -on -one, but he kind of has this guy in the deep quarter. But if you're going to... make at some point he has to commit down to this route because otherwise these guys aren't going to be in that window or at some point you know you can do it from the outside as well so let's see what they do here to, to beat it just that right and then this guy's playing really trying to play that but there's all this room out here even though his leverage is pretty good on the route initially he just doesn't, yeah. there's just too much space. He's in phase, pretty good. It's just a great catch. Odunze. And great ball tracking from Odunze too. Yeah, it's crazy. How's the pass rush here? You get play action. So you see Murphy, I mean, right. yeah, Murphy, he falls back into his bag of tricks. He sets up the, uh, So he's rushing the B gap now. So his initial key he kind of sets him up with his feet because he wants to get vertical. That's what he wants to do. He wants to just run straight down the pipe. Yeah. <laughs> so clubs him, clubs him, and he's just fighting his way through. The fact that he he gets that much displacement on Fatanu is impressive. Yeah. Yeah, he like, catches uh, 
He catches for Tani. Gets him kind of leaning, right? He doesn't expect him to be back there that quick. Yeah. So he wins with like lateral movements and and, and power because he's he's granted he's playing in a two gap stance, a mere step stance. So he doesn't get to fly up field very often. But he, he he's so he's so experienced having to learn how to rush the passer this way, and it's just not that as advantageous. Um, that he like he knows how to how how to get production from the spot, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, this is very intriguing. But again, th- there's he's, also he's the one getting doubled again, right? But also, I've noticed you, for for you, Dell, there's a little bit of like diffusion of responsibility here between the guard and the tackle. Yeah, they, they both keep, are. Kind it of, keeps seem to be happening, right? Like we saw it with the yeah. two eye. We saw it now. We're seeing it with the three. Like the way they yeah. handle the combo, just like nice, nah, your guy, nice, nah, your guy. Right, and he's kind of lulling him to sleep. And I think he's smart. He knows they're sliding from him. So he's like, I'm going to stay on the guy that is sliding with me because they're thinking their eyes are on the next dude. I don't know what, what, why does he think that this is the thing to do, though? I don't know. I mean, I would anyway, think Byron to, would be, I mean, I would... to be fair to them, they give Penix just enough time. So, <laughs> right. But again, this is a, a another different. Uh, I told you, Grub varies his pass pro schemes. This is another different pass pro scheme. He's pulling the uh, guard around, getting the the uh, kind of action here, right? And then and uh, we should say Murphy gets held at the end. Yeah. I I lined do, do that a lot. It's messed up. And now this is the layer off your play action shot, right? Like this is uh uh no, it's not really. It's pin pull anyway. So to me, Ford like didn't really pop. Just when I just watching him, he didn't like leap off the tape, but that mm-hmm. might be because, just speaking f- from my perspective, watching linebackers, they generally, uh, if they're not fast and like running to the football fast, and and then it is kind of harder to pop, right? Right, and and granted, and th- like this isn't. Go ahead. Yeah, well, this class just doesn't have that type of guy. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Colson's and, like and, a tank. He like rumbles through people, um, mm-hmm. running sideline to sideline as we saw, which was cool, but it's still not like a, a speeding kind of bullet. Yeah. Right. And th- this just isn't the. Uh, th- this wow. is a game where he simply doesn't pop, you know? Wow, that's an impressive play. Which I mentioned his contact balance earlier. But um, to stay up here and then <laughs> get through. Mm-hmm. That Lyman thought he had a pancake there. What down the distance is this? Third and one. Did they get it? I don't think so. So you'd like him to, with the guard going flat away, right, Griff? You'd want him to play with this hand and pad back, right, not expose his chest. But it's Mm -hmm. short yardage, so he's just trying to... I guess he kind of plays with this hand, but I'd like to see the reverse angle here. But the recovery is, is very impressive to put the hand down to stay up. That's a very impressive play. And also encouraging for, you know, you're mentioning the size. He will get comboed a lot yeah. of three techniques still, especially in with how the league's running all these nickel over fronts and 
especially with how the league started attacking that with like gap style runs where mm-hmm. you're, you're often going to combo to three. Oh, they get a fourth down stop here. Yeah, I'm not with with Sweat. I know there's there's quite a. I've seen some love for him. He just seems quite big to me. I know that's such lazy analysis, but I'm not sure. It'll be interesting to see how the league views him. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if he's like a day three pick. Yeah. The, the league is weird with what nose tackles they decide are like Worth the next. It. Yeah. Yeah. And the, which ones are like, uh, whatever. But then a lot of those guys that they're like, uh, whatever about end up becoming good rotational players. It's all about the ability to move because a lot of guys in college can hold the point, but they may not necessarily be able to hold the point that well in the NFL. And they can make up, excuse me, they can make up for that difference by their ability to shed the block and move laterally and stuff. Um, so, and granted, Travis Jones for, uh, I think that's his name, for ba- for Baltimore, he ended up yep. panning out and he kind of had that criticism initially. Yep. He tested crazy, though. This is, yes. uh, this is a really impressive play from... Uh, from Murphy, just again getting vertical quick. He's playing like a. They bumped him to a four tech, letting him shoot the gap. Uh, but Wildcat cheat the numbers, and uh, he's beating, splitting the double, beating the pull, getting rid of that, and and making contact, and they get a stop. There's another gadget play. Yeah, it's funny. Murphy was having a game here. Yes. Although, uh, where is he on this? He's not in the game. So it's clearly a coached thing that the drop the knee technique. A lot of uh, a lot of teams will uh, use that in the NFL as well. Yeah, that's something I'm looking forward to with McDonald. Seeing what uh, techniques they coach the the new guys, how, what the differentiations are and stuff. I think the NFL is fairly like you know they have fairly similar body types across the boards, fairly similar like athletes in terms of you have to be damn athletic generally. So I think they largely kind of teach the same stuff. Now, especially, right? Yeah. Kind of just what works for the guy within reason. Okay, so is that a disappointing uh, rep for Jalen Ford? Obviously, the coverage is like a pressure coverage. Yeah, I would. I'd like to see him kind of react to. Well, his key. Is it a fire zone? He's the it's, he... a, it's a creeper. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So but he, yes. so he's keying he's keying his number uh, yeah, yeah, so he's keying his number three. He's not thinking about Yeah. Wait, can I count? Which... Is this an unbalanced? No, formation? no, you can count. No, 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 no. This is so but it's a okay. really clever. Sh- it's another. Um, well, actually, let me do this properly. It's a very clever shift from Grub again, because the the shift busts the uh, busts the creeper really. Um, and also the inside release right up the pipe is a. Uh, yeah, and, and it's just credit four verse, but run in a clever way, right? Sorry, Griff. Yeah. I was just saying really quick, credit to Penix here for ripping the bullet there. You'd like to see yep. him be willing no to No hesitation. Well. He's got a guy, he's got a guy blitzing here, and yeah, he's fairly unfazed, right? Yeah. And uh, again, 
Grub varying it up. This time it looks like pin pull because he pulls the center. Um, even this type of release is like a gap style. Uh, like if you think about a gap path. Yeah. Um, you know, a gap down block climb for the tight end. Yeah, or or even like if you're if we're pin pulling and we're we're just intent on you know we we want to keep this dude in like this guy might go hunting for that backer right, even if we're running this way. So I think I think uh, yeah, I mean Ford's got ice of three. I think the pool holds him as well. It's good design. At least he doesn't come downhill. He, he just and that's a good scan and look checking the mirrors. Yeah, that's just a good play. Yeah. Hits quick. Pain in the butt look. Pair tight ends into the boundary slot. And they get him with leak. Disgusting. And, and so disgusting. Not not a fun rep for, for Ford. No, so we, we um I tweeted this play out because uh, it's 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 nasty. So they get cover four, and the whole purpose is these guys. He's he's deep. I'm the deep quarter. I've got to match that. Like we've got to play that. He's deep. I've got to match that. Uh, I'm the deep quarter here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in this look to really make sure uh, we've got the protection to be able to do this. And then we're going to just drain a tight end across the formation and then run him up. These guys aren't here because they run off and it's gets matched up with this guy or this guy, which typically who's the final three receiver guy, this guy. So it gets matched up with Ford and he just thinks, I think he thinks like the way it looks to him, is like this is the drag, and so he's gonna take that, and he starts looking back at the quarterback as it then bends upfield on like the leak route. Uh, yeah, imp impressive design, great pass protection as well. Penix just slightly off timing with it. Yeah. Well, slightly off target, I should say. What what pass play do we get here? Is it the combo protection again? Yeah. Well, well like that's just inside zone, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, or we they're they're much more. You see Murphy trying to do the same thing again, set up seventy one, work back to the fifty five to the tackle. Yeah, there he's so much Manu. like he's he's like sticking his foot up that guy's butt, like he's overlapping to yeah. prevent that gap. Yeah, so that's an impressive rep from Fatayu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's them correcting to it. Yeah, that's like weak wide zone, actually, isn't it? Play fake wise. Yes. So the bubble makes sense. It's it's like uh, Ford doesn't realize because the concept is not what he's expecting because it's throwback. yeah he's just thinking I'm I've got the drag here, um, and he the worst bit here is yeah yeah that look back which you just saw, uh, it's this this there which is the problem like he i think he it's a shame again because exposure wise it would have been nice to see him actually just turn and run with this but he has a little this peak back here is a disaster i also wonder if he expected this guy to have had his hips flipped for that and then he's got this dude because ultimately in the pattern Who's the you know, who, who's the three? Who's the four here? Yeah. Like, is this is this the? I mean, really, this is the three, isn't it? But I'm, I'm thinking he's thinking maybe this and and then this. But anyway, yeah, the peak back kills him. But at least it's, that's not like a pure speed issue. That's more just eyes were wrong. Didn't expect it. Mm -hmm. And nasty, absolutely nasty design. Another gadget play, by the way, if we're doing the gadget play counter. Oh. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Just 
super unfortunate. And it's more of Penix being active off platform. And it's like he did turn up. Yeah, I don't think I'd seen him be this active off platform before. Uh, sorry, when when you were saying that, were you, was it because of what Ford was able to do in his drop? Uh, well, I was talking about Penix, but it's, yeah, Matty, what do you think of Ford's drop here? Well, it's cool how he turns and then turns. Uh, it's okay, isn't it? It's interesting how they play their weak. Um, like what is this? Is, is it like a, why does he... Is he trying to influence the protection? I don't know why he. What's he doing? Like where, where's the weak hook? Like, do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like this is the pure yeah. middle. Kind of odd. Anyway. Yeah. Um. Corner did a great job overlapping this. Just got very yeah. unfortunate. I'm, I'm trying to translate this rep from Ford to NFL hashes. I just feel like he, he gets kind of the fact that he chooses to melt back or drift back when he does will lend itself to the NFL game. Yeah. Role. It's the same. It's that same thing of the fear of the, the, the in cut behind you. Right. Yeah. This, I don't understand this way of what is this guy doing? I don't understand that. I don't know. I mean, is he the? Is he a spy? No, it's weird. Okay. Well, the game is basically over now. I think that's a pretty good look at it. You yeah. Know? Um, I, I guess I I should reiterate, and we've we've had it said in the chat again that Sweat it was a very impressive athlete for his size, like one point eight seven, a uh, one point eight seconds ten yard split at three hundred sixty six pounds, and just his size and length that probably does make him a more attractive if if you know the the medicals all good, way more attractive than day three. I just see a lot of stuff where it's like okay, the, the you know how does it's all well and good being big and having a you know fairly explosive first step at least testing wise but a lot of that stuff was him just being big but i need to watch more of him in terms of as a yeah. fit for seattle maybe but i think if they were thinking we need another big guy in terms of limited draft assets as it is and more obvious needs they probably would do that undrafted free agency day three i'd be surprised if which sweat might be there day three we don't know it's great drift said the way the nfl views these guys is a bit weird but in terms of as a if they're going to take him day two, I'd be shocked. Like, I'd be absolutely shocked. Um, whereas if they took Byron Murphy at uh, 16 overall, I would not be surprised because he just gives oh. you dynamic ability. And what you'd be able to do, like, I don't I don't think he's a four-eye, but in nickel, you could definitely play him in the two-eye nose. And McDonald, when uh, Michael Pierce wasn't out there, he would plug and play various defensive tackle types as the nose or the three tech, and they'd almost just play left and right. And whenever the the solid call or the close calls to your side, you're you're playing in the the three, and when it's not, you you when it's away from you, you're playing in the two eye. So, yeah, I mean M Murphy from that drift, I'm kind of pumped. Uh, yeah, Newton got so big towards the end of that season, and I wonder at what point his his. Uh, foot was causing him some issues because mm. his his um i don't know he didn't look as explosive to me necessarily as he did the previous year but obviously with the caveat that he's mirror stepping his stance is off right he he didn't jump the snap maybe as much as he we, we maybe thought he could have and he obviously has some really impressive burst and agility I don't know. I right. definitely taught myself into either of the players. I don't know how you feel yeah. about that. I, I'd be I'd be happy with either. I mean, just to get what come out of the draft with one of those two in the first. I mean, it's called a win. You know, if one guy ends up being significantly or better than the other, so be it. I feel like both will be good, um, impressive players. Um, it does seem like Murphy has a better 
I mean, like Newton doesn't have a bad base at all. It's good. Just Murphy has a better base. But then I just feel like then Newton has more juice, if that makes sense. Um, so it comes down to what they value. Style might matter here. But also, like, I feel like Murphy's going to have to be a three technique. And I feel like Newton's a better three technique. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. It, it, Michael Hall or, or, or Roro might be the guy anyway, you know. Um, yeah. Michael Hall's who I'm going to watch in a second. So. Yeah, I'd be curious to know. You, you'll – I. Oh, well, you, you'll make your own mind up. But There you go. Yeah. There's a broader spectrum right. of play. So we have a donation from Axel. Axel, thank you so much. So in terms of your question, um, I mean, doing a series on football theory and lingo, like that's not – like that is all kind of very available. Um, like in terms of – if you – it's obviously a process. Like it's um, – yeah, we. I mean, we tried to keep it. We tried. We try not to talk too much lingo. I may have just done that. Apologies if so, but I, we're trying on the podcast to be educa educating when we're talking about stuff. If it is a bit more like footbally, uh, but at the same time, if there's like a phrase that doesn't make sense, it should be the case that if you search that phrase on Twitter, you'll get a video of it, or if you search that phrase on the internet, there'll be an article or a clinic on it. Um, but also that's kind of a thing of when we're doing like the football coaching kind of stuff or the football scheme stuff, sometimes it's a case of it's just a persistence thing of like how much do you actually want to know versus like surface level stuff. And if, if you want to be a complete degenerate, you can be. But also I'm hoping the podcast is still a good listen if you're not wanting to be a complete football degenerate as well. But obviously accessibility is very important to us because we want more and more people to watch podcasts, more and more people want to engage at the same time as recognizing our niche and our expertise is, uh, with the more like, uh, advanced analytics stuff. So anyway, Griffith, you, you got anything to add on that? Uh, well, I was, I mean, that's a, it's a tough, I feel like we could kind of go there, um, as we get, our hands on McDonald's Seahawk defense, and we could kind of combine the two. Well, yeah, oh, for uh, sure. I, I, but general, I, I fo general football theory and lingo. Yeah, I don't know if we can do like a one-on-one -on -one series. I mean, it's it's worthwhile, but um, I appreciate the question. I appreciate, love that there's interest for that. Um, yeah, but for I sure. do I do recommend like you hear terms from us, Google them, YouTube them, Twitter search them. I promise you, you'll find like really clear cut examples, visuals, and you just keep exposing yourself to that. You'll start to, you'll start to realize that this stuff is more accessible than you would think. It's just, you know, the, the coded language that, that you hear feels inaccessible, but the, what the words actually mean is quite simple. Um, yeah. And that's, that's literally what, um, that's how Griff and I, uh, did it as well. Like, um, and that's why I'm, I've added the pen in and stuff to try and annotate some things while we're talking it through. But uh, yeah, oh, we're always open to suggestions of how we can make it better because that's obviously a main aim of us, of us. So please do comment them as well. But thanks for the donation as well, Axel. And Reflect the Sun, thank you as well. Always enjoy the breakdown. Thanks, gents. No problem. Thank you, Reflect the Sun. If you do want to donate to the podcast, uh, there's a YouTube super chat feature that Axel and Reflect the Sun have just used, so thanks for that. Uh, there's also a Stripe link, which uh, some people use as well. Uh, whatever floats your boat probably works better if you're watching on uh, replay. Please do comment on what prospects you want to see next. We'll likely be back Wednesday, Tuesday. Griff could do a little little Thursday pod on my birthday. Could do That's that. That's right. I might, I'm going to a whiskey tasting, so I might be a bit, uh, skew whiffy, but, uh, <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. Do the general football theory and lingo then. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, we'll be back sometime, but please do comment what you want to see from us. Cause like Axel, that's, that's a very useful comment. Cause now I'm thinking about it. So thank you. Um, we're always open to suggestions. Follow Griff on Twitter at CMikeSpinMove. Follow me at Matty F. Brown. Follow the pod at Seattle Overload. We should be back to our normal thing of Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, you know, uh, 
uh, thank you for tuning in on Sunday. It's great to see so many people here. Hope you've all had a really good Easter. I uh, think it's approaching the end of Ramadan as well. So excited for um, our Muslim listeners. Griff, anything else you want to say? So hope you guys had a great Sunday. Hope you guys have a great week. Until next time, hit it, Maddie. <laughs> wow, that was so smooth. <laughs>